other slab competitions in Big Bear in California. And I missed the first one because uh, I didn't even know it was taking place because nobody told me about it and, and we didn't have any idea. That, but on the second one, they came around with some flyers from Big Bear and they put one up on the bulletin board down at the sheriff station and I said, you know, I think I'll enter that thing. Well, so I did. And uh, I came in second. Everybody was talking about how fast they were and all this kind of stuff. And one, one guy had a ring on the side of his belt with a special screw in the gun that was supposed to hang it on. It was no holster at all. It just kind of hung on his belt. And they were all talking about this guy, you know. Well, that, that outfit is really fast. It sounded pretty scary, but when he got up there, we, the thing was all over and he was still trying to get the gun on the hook off of this <laughs> screw that he had hanging on the side of his belt. <laughs> The targets were only about eight, about 21 feet away and about 18 inches in diameter. And the two guys would get up there and blast away and they fired 12 shots, six apiece, and the balloons are still hanging there, see? You know, it was getting kind of funny after a while, even the audience was laughing at some of that. So I realized at the time, I said, well, it doesn't matter how fast you are, how fast can you hit the targets with cows? And I did come in second, but it was just a fluke, just lucky, because I was bad as the rest of them. I had a whole year next year. I tried to work on something that worked a lot better and I came up with bringing up the gun and, and grabbing it with the other hand. Same distance uh, from the ground as before, like uh, hip shooting. You know. I thought the two hands would kind of zero it in on the same position each time. So it worked pretty good in practice. But during the contest I got shot down the first time. So I thought, well, that didn't work. And then I figured out, if I just raised the gun up just about a foot higher and uh, tilt my head down a little bit, I could see the sights. And it was just as fast, it didn't take any longer to move it an extra few inches. I thought, this I had some. So I did that for a whole year. And I got where I could uh, hit the target each time, and even when you're dry firing, you can practice this with an empty gun and still get some good out of it, because you can see where the sights are, you know. I was really on to something, I thought, and sure enough, I won. Wiped them all out. So it looked kind of stupid, everybody was laughing at me, but it worked, so I took the money. So then they started having different kinds of shoots. Instead of waiting a year, while they had one every month, they had all different types of shoots. They had multiple targets, or maybe... Maybe you had to move from one to another, or targets were moving, or different distances, and you know, there's no limit to what you could do. And my system worked better on all those than it did at the leather slab, really. I was winning everything for a while, wasn't I? <laughs> and they're, they're a stubborn bunch. They wouldn't, uh, they kept laughing at me and thinking it was funny, and I thought, that's great. And then one time, they, well, I could tell they're, they're not really mad at me, but they're getting a little bit. <laughs> Disgust, they're a little bit teed off, you know. And I thought, well, it's not right for me to win all the contests all the time. I said to Joy, and this is true, I said, this time I'm not, I'm not going to try too hard. As a consequence, I shot better than I ever did before in my life. <laughs> Put them all in one hole, practically, and it, and uh, wasn't a bit nervous because I wasn't trying too hard. <laughs> and I shot a lot better than I ever had before. <laughs> So that's about the time everybody else started trying the same thing. Eldon Carl, I think, was about the first. What was it like in the early days shooting with Cooper? He started off with a shoulder holster, yeah. a 45 in the shoulder holster. But the shoulder holster didn't, it was just too slow. So then, finally, Cooper started doing the same thing, and then he realized that what it was the greatest and started teaching all this stuff. And, I'll, I'll give him credit, though. He didn't take it, all the credit for it like he did it. He always gave it to me and called it the Weaver stance, which was good.